Hey guys, it's May May. I apologize for my plain background. We're working on that. Watch this space. It'll change. But if you were here last week in Sunday's devotion, you would have heard about the can't help it. So that's what we talked about. And I realize that a lot of you guys deal with worry and anxiety, much like I used to. And I wanted to talk to you about something that I discovered when I came out of my anxiety that I think made a huge difference. You you may not realize this about me, or maybe this is something I realized about myself after um, God healed me from my anxiety, my PTSD, my agoraphobia, and my depression. And I will link my um, video that talks about that in the description below. Um, I realized something about myself, and that was how I functioned, how I got through every day. And there was a part of that that made me so angry and that's what I want to talk to you about because I don't want you to be doing this as well, okay? So when I was in that place in my life where I dealt with panic everywhere all the time for anything, the panic happened no matter what function it was. If I was going to see my kids in a play, if we were going to a movie, if we were going out to dinner, if we were going to church, um, if we were going to, if we were going on vacation, the panic that I dealt with could have been crippling. Somehow I fought it off. I know how I fought it off. My mother taught me to fight it off. My mother taught me because she went through this before there were good medicines and things to help help you. She did it on her own. And she taught me all these tips and tricks that I could do to get me through the day. And I remember doing those things. I told Vince, I remember specifically vacations we went on when we would be on a cruise. There was one cruise in particular that was like a dream cruise that we got to go on. And it was our whole family. It was a huge ship. It was incredible. And I and what I remember about that trip is my anxiety. How I fought it, how it felt, how I was constantly, I just, I always felt like I was constantly one one other blow of air from blowing. You know, when you have a balloon and you get to that point, you think, if I go one more time, it's going to pop. I remember spending that whole trip feeling that way. And I worried about everything. I worried about the kids. I worried about the trip. I worried about what would happen if, if this happened. Or, and I don't even like to say all the stuff I worried about because I don't want to give anybody reason to worry. But you know, because you live this life, you can worry about everything and it can overwhelm you. And I remember... One of the tricks my mama taught me was say to yourself for the next whatever, I'm not going to worry. For the next 20 minutes, next 10 minutes, next whatever, I'm not going to worry. And I remember being on these trips and I would say to myself, let's say we're on the cruise and we were going to go to a show, which meant we had to sit in a room all quiet and watching a show, right? And I remember saying to myself, Okay, for the length of this show, I am not going to worry. I'm not going to think about all my problems. I'm not going to think about what could happen. I'm going to watch the show and enjoy it. And I would do my best to do that. And I remember what it felt like and how much energy I spent keeping myself in check from worry. And then on the flip side of that, after I was healed, we went on a cruise. And I vividly realized the difference in my experience, in my vacation. I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed shows. I enjoyed being with my children. I enjoyed the relaxation and the freedom. I enjoyed my husband. I enjoyed my family. I enjoyed the view. I enjoyed the sights and the smells. And during my anxiety, that didn't happen. In anxiety, I worried about every single thing in the room, whatever it may be. If there was a twinge in my body, I had a panic. If there was a, a balcony, I would watch it constantly to make sure nobody got too close. If there was a, a smell in the air that I didn't understand. There's a joke we have one time, and I'll share it with you. This may make Bible study go long, but it's kind of funny. I was always afraid of a ship going down. I'm just talking about cruises because that was the vacation we took. But I was always afraid of a ship going down, you know. And we were on the uh, Lido deck one day, and we were docked. We were docked in port. This is why this is so funny. And we're all meeting at a certain spot to head off the ship to go um, and explore the port. And as we're sitting there, I start to notice all the crew walking around with their vests on, like their life vests on. And I'm just noticing, and this is in my panic days, okay? And I'm noticing, I'm like, 
why have they all got their life vests on? Now, I don't know anything about what the crew had to do, right? So my brother, who, by the way, has never worried a day in his life, he just doesn't worry. And it's not because he's superhuman. He just has a different faith than I do. He's very, very strong in his faith where worry is concerned, okay? He just doesn't worry, him or my dad. My brother walks out of the double doors and he sees this look on my face and my mom's trying to tell me, oh, it's nothing, it's probably a drill, blah, blah, blah. And mom, he looks at mom and he says, what's up? And she's like, she's worried about these people and all these life vests. And Danny said, well, I'll go see what's going on. <laughs> so my brother walks over to the crew member with the life vest on and starts talking. And I'm just like, oh, he's finding out what's going on and I'm feeling better, blah, blah, blah. And he turn, he's, go, he's talking to this person, yes, 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 blah, 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 blah. And as he turns to walk back over to us, my mom goes, well, she does her hands like this. And Danny goes, he got you mouths. We're going down in like points. And my mother started laughing so hard. She's like, we're docked. Danny came up and he said, they're doing a drill. It's a drill they have to do when at certain times, blah, blah, blah. But my panic even took over when we were docked at a port and there was no, there was no sirens, no nothing. But that was my panic I dealt with. Now, I'm telling y'all a lot about me. Y'all probably right. Some of you right now that don't worry are going, goodness, my mother felt that way. So, that second vacation without anxiety, this is what happened to me. I got mad. And you know what I got mad about? I got mad because I ruined all of my memories with worry. All of the things I could have been growing, all the memories I could have had, all the the sights I could have seen, all the smells I could have experienced, all the smiles on people's faces. I spent so much time worrying in those moments that I missed it. I missed so much with worry. You may not feel this way. You may, this may not speak to you, but I'm going to tell you. The times I spent at football games, my children playing football, and I was too busy thinking about myself and keeping myself from exploding with worry and panic. I missed the game. I missed the ball game. I missed them playing on the field. Now, did I miss everything? No, I have memories from those times. But the joy I could have experienced if I would have just put my joy in God, got my joy from the Lord and quit worrying over and over again about things that may never happen. And by the way, never did happen, never happened. So, when I was healed from the anxiety and got to experience my next cruise, I was literally angry at the person that had kept me from all the fun I could have had. Now, that may take a little while to sink in for you, but this is the truth. And so when someone tells me I just can't enjoy things because I panic and I worry, blah, 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 it ignites a fire in me. And I want to tell a person so hard, I want to just go, listen, don't let Satan use that tool against you. There are beautiful things for you to experience. And what you're worried about will probably never happen. And you're missing out on everything around you because you feel like you have to worry. You have made your job to worry. When that's not our job. God tells us in scripture, we're not supposed to worry. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be confident in him. And here's the thing. When we shuck all this down, I always say shuck it down to the cob, but I want you to, and what that means is when we peel away all the layers, okay, the foundation is God. That is our foundation, okay? So if you can say to yourself, God, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go to this event. I'm going to do whatever it is you have me to do. And whatever outcome I experience is your choice. I'm going to be okay with that. You've heard before in scripture, people have said, even if you don't, even if you decide this is the way I am taken out, like that's what we, my mom used to tell me all the time. You think God's going to take you out on a cruise? Like, because I would just be panicked all the time. You have to know how mom was. Even if this is the way I go, it was by God's design. And I'm not going to worry about it. God is, who better in your corner to worry for you than God? Here's what you have to understand. Satan uses that tool against you every day, all day, and in ways you have no idea, in ways you think you have under control and you don't. Even the, I'm not going to worry for 20 minutes, Satan used that tool against me. He would go, mm, well, don't worry for 20 minutes. You'll spend 20 minutes trying not to worry. He knows what he's doing. He's so good at it. He's so good at it. And you guys have heard me say before, I used to not want to give him that kind of credit. 
but he's he is he's the he's the author of lies. He is the, he is deceit in and of himself. So if he can distract you from what God has for you in whatever way, he will. So where does that lead us? Okay, when I went through my anxiety and panic and all of that sort of thing, there was one scripture I leaned on all the time. And it's funny. I don't actually lean on the scripture as much anymore. I feel like I just understand the scripture, which is good. I'm really happy about that. But I want to bring it to you in case you're a person who worries. And you've heard me say it before. It's not new. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now, I want you to do this. <clears throat> when you have, when you worry, I'm not going to say when you have an occasion to worry, because if you're like me, I didn't need an occasion. I could worry at the drop of a hat. When you worry, you need to wash that worry through the filter of Philippians 4.8. And here's what I mean by that. You need to look at it and go, is there anything praiseworthy? Is there anything excellent? Is there anything noble? You need to wash it through this. And what's even cooler, if you'll look at this scripture in multiple translations, some of these words change like honorable or just or pure. Some of those words change to a more like modern word that we would use. And even that can help you. If you need to write down these words and decide, do any, do any of the thoughts I'm having fit this scripture? Because if they don't, they need to go away. This is how God wants me to think. This is what he wants me to think on and how to think. For me, it came down to, my mother used to tell me, and I don't want anybody to be offended by this, okay? Because mother talked to me the way she needed to talk to me. God talks to me the way he needs to talk to me. But mother used to tell me that my anxiety and my pain, it was pretty selfish. And I, and I never understood that. It would just, especially then, it would just, it just make me mad. And I never understood why it was so selfish. And when I came out of it, when I was able to go on the other side of it, I realized exactly what she was saying. In all those moments of my life, when I could have been enjoying any other thing, I was wrapped up in myself. I was wrapped up in how I felt and what I was afraid of and what could happen. What could happen to me? What could happen to someone around me that affects me? I was very selfish. I'm not telling you you're selfish. You decide. You see if that works for you. For me, when mom told me that, it didn't. But later I could see how it was very selfish. Instead of me thinking on what God would want me to think on, I was spending time thinking on what Satan was putting in my head about me. Something my grandmother used to say. I tell Vince this all the time and we laugh. About, we don't laugh about it, but we laugh because I'm beginning to see how God brings us people in our lives that speak to us and say things. And my mom is one of those that has taught me over the years. Who's just taught me. Just She's flooded into me and all that stuff floods out. And my grandmother used to say, you don't need to worry. And here's why. What you worry about probably won't ever happen. And what does happen, you never see coming. <laughs> and I tell Vince that. And I'm like, Vince, this is a perfect example. Listen, this is going to be hard to say, but I'm going to say it to you. I never worried about losing my mother. I really didn't. My mother was healthy. My mother was vibrant and going and happy and, and fun and, and the picture of energy. I never, I never thought it. The whole time she was in the hospital, they told me over and over again, she's going to be fine. Every doctor, she's going to be fine. She's a long hauler. It's going to take her some time. It never crossed my mind we would leave, lose her. I never, ever thought that until the day it happened. And it was one of those things where after one Vince and I could look back on it and we said, it's one of those things my grandmother talked about. You can worry and worry and worry about things that probably will never happen and the things that do happen, you never see coming. And I don't know if that helps you. I don't know how this video will be perceived. Some of you guys might think I'm being too mean or whatever. I don't know. I'm just being honest with you. Don't let Satan use the tool of worry to distract you from what God has for you. God has blessed you in your life. Look at your blessings. Look what he's done. Look at your family. Look at your children and your grandchildren, your, your partners, your spouses. Look at your siblings. He's blessed you so much. Look around those things and don't allow worry to 
to squelch your blessings. Look at what you've got. Now, I feel like I can say this to you. And the reason I feel, you know how people go, oh, I can say it because I am that. Like whenever I say something about my weight, oh, I can say it because I know I'm, I'm big. <laughs> but here's what I'm telling you. I can say this to you because I used to be you. I used to worry 24-7. I was, what did I do best? Worry. I worry. Now, I truly believe you don't have to live as a worrier. I really do. When I see your comments, when I read how you worry and how you are anxious, it truly hurts my heart. I have a burden in my soul for people who live like I used to live. And it hurts. And I can say this to you. You don't have to live like that. I didn't have to. I did for a long time. I didn't have to. But you have to get to the point that you don't live that way anymore. And it takes work. It takes you working. Now, let me say this to you. People used to say to me, well, if you believe in God, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have anxiety and panic. This is not true. Satan attacks God's people. It's what he does with whatever tool he's got. Um, and I also believe that medicine is a real help. Some people will say to you, oh, well, if you believe in God, you don't need medicine. That's not necessarily true. I believe mental health is an illness just like the flu just like a virus, just like cancer. I believe mental health is an illness. You can think that how you want to, but that's what I believe. I believe you can get help for other illnesses, and I believe you can get help for these illnesses. I really do. I believe you can get help. Now, your help may be like what I had to have. I had to have psychiatric help. I had to have medicine to bring my brain to a level where I could hear God. I was so distracted by Satan and so covered by the other thoughts that I couldn't even hear God. We couldn't even communicate. That's how I felt, okay? And the medicine brought me to that healthier level. I was able to come off the medicine. I'm on, I'm on no anxiety medicine. I'm on blood pressure medicine, and that's because of the weight. That's a whole different issue. <laughs> we'll go there one day too. But you might need to get help. Your help may not be psychiatric. You might just need a godly counselor. You may... Through my psychiatric journey, I, I was led to a, um, to a count, not a counselor. I went from a psychiatrist to a psychologist. I never can get the titles right. Psychiatrist to psychologist. My psychologist is where I was able to talk things out. You may need that. You may need a godly counselor from a local church, from a local um, um, Christian organization. You, there are lots of godly counselors out there. So many resources available to you. And Here's what I want to say. I don't know your area, okay? But I feel like if you do some research, you know, I have Google now. You can Google in your area, maybe psychiatrist, maybe maybe reach out to a local church, your own church, reach out to your pastor. They have these resources. They know how to find you what you need. You can reach out to me and I'll do everything I can to help you find someone. I don't have like a phone number available to to something like that. But I will search. If you want me to help you, I will search. I don't want you to feel worried. Now, for those of you today watching right now and go, hey, I don't have that kind of worry. I just worry. Everybody worries. Uh, we had a guy in our church. He wasn't a guy. He was a deacon in our church. And he used to say, when someone would go, oh, I'm worried about it. He go, don't be worried about it. Be prayerfully concerned. But don't be worried about it. And we, we adopted that. Instead of worrying about something, instead of wringing our hands worrying about something, we would take it to God in prayer and we would be prayerfully concerned and take it to God. And then we would wait on God's outcome. My mom used to tell me, and some of you guys will remember, I've, I've quoted this a thousand times. Mom would say, God is not in heaven wringing his hands, wondering how he's going to get you out of this situation or how this is going to, how worth the results is going to be. He already knows. He doesn't, only, he doesn't only know what the result is. He knows what the answer is long term. So lean on God. Now, I don't know how, how this will um, go today. I don't know what our response underneath this comp, this video will be. I pray that it will be one of hope and one where you can be a person who says, you know what, I'm going to start this journey of not worrying. It doesn't happen overnight. It's no different than weight loss. It's no different than um, taking medicine for an illness. If there's no miracle, there's no miracle reaction. It is a process and you can do it. You don't have to worry. You can come out of it. I just truly believe it. I'm going to pray for us today. God, thank you so much that we don't have to be worriers. Thank you so much that you did not design our life to where we had to worry about every single thing we went through. But instead, you designed our life with a plan and a purpose 
to complete what you have for us. God, I thank you for that. Thank you for the healing that you brought to my life. And thank you for the same healing that is available to everyone watching today who is struggling. God, I know that this message will hit hearts and some people will start to um, feel bad or feel down about some of the things I said. God, that is not what we want. I pray today that for those people watching, you will keep them lifted up. You will keep them strong. And that instead of worrying about this situation, they will put feet to it and start to get better and start to move away from their worry. And they will put everything in your hands and know that whatever the outcome is, it's your outcome. God, for those that don't worry, that think that this uh, this whole worry thing is, is strange to them, and I know there's people who exist like that, I pray that you'll instill in them today to say a prayer for those who do worry. And I also pray that you'll... Um, that you'll let them see the blessing of not worrying and how wonderful that is for them. God, as we move forward and, and we leave this moment together, I pray for those that are going to leave and start to worry about things that were said or done here. I just pray, God, you'll hold them up. You'll wrap your arms around them and you'll help them to see. As a matter of fact, God, I pray right now for everyone who is watching and is starting to wonder about what the next step is. I pray you'll place that in their lap. I pray that you'll place the direction you have for them in their lap and that they will be able to take that direction and find healing. Thank you, God, that I know you can do this. I know you can heal. I know you can bring people out of anxiety. And the next time I speak to those same people who have told me how they worry, they'll be able to tell me that they've overcome their worry and that they're enjoying life through your eyes, God. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So there you go, guys. Now, this is where I start to be prayerfully concerned. And here's what I mean by that. Sometimes these videos can be taken in ways I don't mean for them to be taken. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to hear it as I meant it from my heart. I love you and I don't want you to live a life of worry. In saying that, I want to tell you this. This is just my testimony. Yours may be different. Even from this point on, your journey may be different and probably will be. And when this test is over, you'll have a testimony to share. And I pray that you'll do that. Thank you so much for being here today. And until next time, Bye now.